All right. Now, let's get some insight on why why did they use Esau and Jacob as an example? Why didn't they use anything else? You know, this is symbolic, but everything everything means something. All right. We've already proved that they're, they're not talking about these uh, Edomites and Israelites. That's not even being discussed there. But Jacob and Esau, you know, coming out of the uh, Jacob being born after Esau and grabbing the heel. Let's find out, what, you know, what, why that symbolism is there. You know, for example, in Galatians chapter 4, Shaul, he used uh, Ishmael and Isaac. Ishmael being the son of the bondservant and Isaac being the son of the free. All right? And, and that, that had symbolism behind it. He wasn't talking about Ishmaelites and, and uh, sons of Isaac. You know? It was, it was symbolic. Okay? So... Let's go to uh, Genesis 25. Let's let's reference what that messenger was was uh, what he referenced. Genesis 25. Go ahead and read verse 27. This is uh, Genesis 25 and 27. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. All right, Esau was a cunning hunter. All right, he was referred to as a cunning hunter. Now, who else in Scripture was known as a hunter? Nimrod. Right. Nimrod. And you saw what type of person Nimrod was. Everyone knows about Nimrod. No reason to go to that and explain that. So that's, that's the pattern that he followed. All right? Remember, we're, these are ages that, that, that are being compared here. Now, what was, what was Jacob? He was a plain man dwelling in tents. He was a plain man dwelling in tents. What does that mean? All right. What's the def Let's get a definition. The word plain. This is uh, from Storms. Hebrew word uh, 8535. Tom. Complete, usually morally pious, specifically gentle, dear. The same word translated in Job for perfect. Right. That's the same word that was translated, that they used... For Job, saying he was a perfect man. Okay, and dwelling? Uh, Hebrew word 3427, Yashad. Properly to sit down specifically as a judge in ambush and quiet by implication to dwell, to remain, causatively to settle, to marry. Notice how it said to sit down as a judge. And that word was also used when he was speaking of uh, Deborah, the prophetess. Now she she uh, it says she dwelled under the palm tree. You know she was judging covertly. It's also the same thing applied to uh, Yaakov, and we're going to explain that even further. Uh, get uh, definition for tents. Hebrew word one six eight ohel a tent as clearly conspicuous from from a distance has been translated as tabernacles or home. All right. And let's, let's continue on. Let's, let's go further into the dis descriptions of Esau and Jacob. Uh, let's go into the blessings. Genesis 27. Uh, start at reverse 28. This is uh, Genesis 27 and 28. This is a blessing of uh, Jacob. Therefore, my one give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth, and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be ruler over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that curses thee, and blessed be that blessed thee. Okay, so you see ruling authority, ruling a uh, blessing of rulership being given there. Now let's go on down to verse 39. Verse 39. And Isaac, Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth, and of the dew of heaven shall from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion 
that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. And what we want to focus in on here is, he said, by thy sword shall I live. Just like Nimrod. You know, after the ways of Nimrod. Jacob was after the ways of peace and after judgment. Alright, so you can you can see how that ties in. Now let's let's go on to the uh, the future. Let's get to that last age. Isaiah 2. Isaiah chapter 2, starting verse 2. When you got to go ahead and read it. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of Yahweh's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow unto it. Notice how it says in the last days. This is a time period. Obviously, we're not in these days. This hasn't taken place yet. So when we get to these last days, this last time period, you will know that that age, that other age, has ended because these things will take place. Read on. And many people shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of the mighty one of Jacob. And he shall teach us his ways, and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Okay, so in Isaiah 2, verse 2, it says, Many nations are going to float to the house of Yahweh. They're going to go to Jerusalem. They're going to want to learn the ways of the Most High. All right? It also says the law will go forth from Jerusalem. Read verse 4. Verse 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war any more. See? This, the old age will be a thing of the past. The age of living by the sword, all the nations. Not just the Edomites, all, all the nations living by the sword. And then this new age will, will be the age of Yaakov, of, of uh, being pious, dwelling in tents. All right? Reverencing the Most High. That's the age to come. So you can see the symbolism behind it. It's not talking about dominions. In 2 Ezra 6 verse 9, uh, Esau's dominion going down. It never said that. We're talking about time periods. Alright, let's, let, now let's go back to 2 Ezra. 2 Ezra chapter 2. Gonna, uh, I want you to pick up in verse 27. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 2, verse 27. Be not weary, for when the day of trouble and heaviness cometh, others shall weep and be sorrowful, but thou shalt be merry and have abundance. Go ahead. The heathen shall envy thee. The heathen shall envy thee. Now, are these heathen Israelites? No. Nope. Do you really think that? <laughs> it says, the heathen shall envy thee. Read on. The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee, saith Yahweh. Right, so you know it can't be Israelites. Why would Israelites want to do something against Israelites in this time period here? <laughs> Read on. My hands shall cover thee, so that thy children shall not see hell. Be joyful, O thou mother, with thy children, for I will deliver thee, saith Yahweh. Go ahead. Remember thy children that sleep. For I shall bring them out of the sides of the earth, and shall and show mercy unto them. For I am a merciful, saith Yahweh Mighty One. Now the children that sleep, that sleep in the dust, that valley of dry bones. All right, you should already know about that. It says, remember them. Read on. Uh, embrace thy children until I come, and show mercy unto them. For my wells run over. And my uh, mercy shall not fail. Go ahead. I, Ezra, receive a charge of Yahweh upon the Mount Oreb, and I should go unto Israel. But when I came unto them, they set me at naught and despised the commandment of Yahweh. 
And therefore I say unto you, O ye heathen, that hear and understand. Are these Israelites? Read on. <laughs> Look for your shepherd. He shall give you everlasting rest. For he is near at hand that shall come in the end of the world. In the end of the age. Alright. Read on. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom. For the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Now there's a lot of other things being taught in this chapter. That's a whole other lesson. Some interesting things being taught in that chapter. And we might expound on that in the future. 